Hi guys, Nana here from Tech Testers and today I'm going to talk about the brand new monitor from Asus. So this is the Asus ROG Swift PG35VQ, their brand new ultimate monitor that many of you have been waiting for for a very, very long time and it is finally out. So on paper it has some pretty impressive stats. This is a 35 inch Quad HD monitor that has 200 Hz refresh rate, it has um, HDR 1000, it has G-Sync Ultimate and full array local dimming. So that is all pretty impressive but so is its price. It costs well over 2500 euros and that is a lot of money. At least you don't have to purchase the stand separately. So let's put it to the test and see if it's worth its price. Let's go! Are you about to spend all your cash on an expensive high-end gaming monitor? Then save some money with Cooler Master's excellent NR400 Micro ATX case that offers excellent performance, decent quality, a sleek design and all that at a very decent price. Get yours using the links in the description below. Anyone considering this monitor probably knows what to expect from a high-end Asus ROG monitor. Build quality is fantastic with an extremely solid base and it is by far the heaviest 35 inch monitor I've seen so far. It is height adjustable, it tilts, it swivels, and if you want, you can vase and mount it as well. Of course, we also get the RGB action on the back and on the base of the monitor, which can be synced with your other ROG hardware or turned off if you prefer that. Also in line with all other ROG monitors are the excellent OSD controls using a combination of a joystick and several buttons. There are a ton of options like crosshairs, you are able to tune the local dimming backlight and there are dozens of options to adjust the image to your own liking and you will need them, which I'm gonna talk about a bit later. Now this monitor doesn't come with speakers but it actually has a DAC built in so if you connect your monitor via USB cable to your computer and you connect your headset to your monitor, uh, it will act like a decent sound card. Now, the thing is, most of the high-end motherboards have that option already and if you are going for this monitor, you will probably have a high-end motherboard. But if you don't, then this is a nice little feature. If you were looking forward to this screen, you probably saw the video Linus did so far and you probably know by now that it is an amazing monitor and it really is. It is actually surprisingly good uh, right out of the box. Unlike the PG27UQ that had an IPS panel, this monitor actually has a VA panel, so there are some inherent differences. But when you do use it, it really looks like it has the depth of a good IPS panel. Gaming on the PG35VQ is another thing due to that combination of the local dimming backlight, the proper high peak brightness and the color production of this screen. Now in some previous monitor reviews, I mentioned that HDR is a decent but essentially small little extra that is nice to have and does help in some games, although I am used to an OLED TV that does HDR really well. However, this monitor also does HDR extremely well. The extra contrast and color makes games from Shadow of the Tomb Raider to Battlefield and basically any Ubisoft game from the last two years look a ton better. I can comfortably say this is one of the nicest panels to look at and the best HDR implementation on a PC monitor I've seen so far. Looking at our test results, we see most of that confirmed. Contrast is unmatched, gamma is nice and close to the 2.20 marker, white balance is great, grey balance is spot on and most importantly, color reproduction is near perfect right out of the box. Sustained brightness without the HDR enables is solid and the screen, as expected, dims really well as well. Now, is everything great? No. Uniformity is a typical weakness in large curved VA panels and we see that here as well. It is fine, it is just not amazing. The viewing angles aren't quite IPS level either, although it's not like with TN panels, where shifting a bit behind your monitor can affect the image immensely. Still, it's worth noting that this screen is best experienced by sitting roughly straight in front of it. It was quite interesting that the sRGB mode actually had worse sRGB performance than the default racing mode. Now that is actually easy to forgive since you don't have to use it, but it just feels like some presets are remnants from other screens rather than actually optimizing them to give this screen lots of useful presets. It is also worth noting that this screen uses a lot of power and I don't think the cost will concern buyers when they spend so much money on a screen already, but it will explain the large brick you need to power it. 
So far so good, but I did have two main concerns when it comes to this monitor. So the first one is something similar that the PG27UQ had as well, and that is that even with 512 separate dimmable zones that this monitor has, there is still some halo effect that the light objects have on a dark surface. Now, they did some tweaking to this monitor to minimize that effect, but you can still see it if it's on a dark gray or a dark blue surface. So you will have to tweak this setting depending on what game are you playing or what are you doing with this monitor. Now, the second concern is actually about the display port technology and how much data you can push through this cable. And there is just not enough bandwidth to run this monitor at this resolution on 200 Hertz with HDR on and with full color depth without cutting a corner or two somewhere. Now, as a result, again, especially when it comes to HDR content, you will have to make choices between refresh rates, color depth and chroma subsampling. There really is no one right setting as chroma subsampling is something that doesn't hurt some games at all while it's really annoying in others and everyday tasks. So for example here, if you want to have as fast experience as possible, I would suggest that you turn off the HDR and you play at 8-bit color and uh, 200 Hz refresh rate, because then you don't have to deal with the chroma subsampling. But for immersive games and all those AAA titles, it is best if you turn the HDR on and you uh, go to 10-bit color and you lower your refresh rate from 200 Hz to 144 Hz because a slight decrease in refresh rate is going to be less noticeable than the chroma subsampling and you do need chroma subsampling to have that proper HDR experience on 200 Hz refresh rate. Now it does leave you wondering if this defeats the purpose of having a 200 Hz refresh rate monitor and you have to keep in mind that this is a VA panel that has 4 millisecond uh, response time and uh, it's a bit slower than its TN panel alternatives. Now, you're not going to notice it while gaming because it does feel really, really fast, but if you put the two screens together and use a high-speed high camera, the PG35VQ uh, is going to be a few milliseconds slower. So maybe the 200 Hz label is a bit suggestive because there are more factors to speed than just refresh rate. Now the Asus ROG Swift PG35VQ is not aimed at competitive gamers just based on the size alone, but is for that immersive gaming and uh, when it comes to that it is better than any other screen we've seen so far. So yeah, it is crazy expensive. But there isn't an experience like it when it comes to gaming monitors, so if you don't have to worry about finances and you don't mind tweaking your settings every once in a while, then this monitor is something very, very special to have. Now, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about this monitor and about this review. Don't forget to give me thumbs up, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye!